So welcome dear participants. It's beautiful to have you with us on the third day of the Martin Roth Symposium about museums and entertainment for this deep dive with Robin Reardon, portfolio executive producer, Walt Disney Imagineering, whose sprint you just saw, and Manusher Shamsrisi, co-founder of Game Lab Berlin at the Hermann von Helmholtz Zentrum für Kulturtechnik at the Humboldt University of Berlin, who will be our first responder for the whole day. My name is Fabian. I will guide you through the deep dive today. And it's a pleasure to have the two of you with us. And also it's a pleasure that you take the time to answer the audience questions. So thank you both. And it's great to be for, here. Yeah. for you as participants, uh, this is the time to ask your questions. So let me explain how to participate in the deep dive sessions. If you have a question, there are three ways to include them in the, this discussion. The first one is via direct audio in this webinar. So please click on the raise your hand icon, which you can find in the menu bar at the bottom of your screen. As soon as it is your turn, I will call you by name and enable your audio. Please unmute yourself so you can ask your question. As soon as you have asked it, we will turn off your audio again. Your video will never be used. So, but if you prefer, you can also ask your question in writing in the chat of this webinar, or you use our online form at campus.re-publica.com, campus.re-publica.com. If you're following from a website or through YouTube, we can include those questions as well. So if you have questions already, feel free to send them already and use the tools. So we have little time and I would like to ask Manu Sher for a quick reaction to Robin Sprint. Well, thank you all for having me. Uh, thank you, Robin, for, for that fantastic uh, input. And I uh, just want to, uh, second, what you all, uh, the audience just heard, this uh, is supposed to be very interactive, which also means uh, the first responder is supposed to uh, be short in what he does in his response uh, and uh, as provocative as possible so that we can enter uh, into a dialogue and discussion. So please uh, bear with me as I'm not going to um, repeat all the many things and dimensions in Robin's input that I uh, wholeheartedly agree with. Uh, which has been uh, a lot just to uh, mention one, uh, the distinction between uh, engagement and activity uh, to which it leads on the one side and uh, disinterest and, and, and passivity uh, that resonated a lot with me. Um, if you look at uh, in museums, uh, I believe that this distinction is, the, um, is a very clear uh, and very fundamental learning from the entertainment world, which of course is uh, in, in, in all of his uh, um, uh, varieties, uh, uh, even being be it theaters, be it uh, cinemas, be it books, be it uh, games, uh, very good in um, really uh, making um, uh, or conceptualizing uh, their approaches built on that understanding of when is something uh, 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 leading into activity and when it's something leading into passivity. And, and as I see it, um, uh, and I'm with Robin on that, um, disinterest uh, is, is of no value uh, in, in no scenario uh, I can think of. So that is something uh, to avoid. And, and there's a um, learning uh, for uh, the museum uh, world um, uh, there that, uh, in, uh, that they can really make themselves useful uh, from the entertainment world. Uh, having said that, um, I believe in um, the end, um, and that's the provocative part to say so, um, when Robin was sharing with us uh, Disney's uh, idea of uh, uh, creating memories, um, that, that of course um, can have, uh, or, or there is a critical perspective needed that the museum world can bring into that because every time memories are created um, uh, and, and every time reality in distinction to fantasy does these two fields uh, uh, impact each other, uh, the question is legitimate, whose memories, uh, whose reality, whose stories are, are told by whom, and Robin mentioned partly uh, aspects of diversity, but I think um, uh, in the end, uh, the question whose stories uh, should be told uh, and uh, whose reality really uh, should be um, shown in an engage 
engagement uh, positive uh, way, that is something that I personally would not see in um, the uh, sphere of the entertainment industry alone. To give you an example, I'm very sorry to Robin, but I could not spare uh, you with this. Um, the risk of not having the research and scholarly perspective of the world of museums uh, uh, when it comes to the question what reality is, 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 um, is told to the world by, by whom, no matter the way it is told. Um, I have a very concrete example of why I think there's a risk. And uh, Robin talked to us about um, uh, pirates, uh, which I personally am a huge fan of. And uh, uh, I have to show it this way so that everybody in the audience can, can uh, see uh, and get my point. Uh, there has been an attempt by Disney to tell the reality of pirates, uh, which resonated a lot uh, with the internet. Um, that's from uh, a TV series uh, by Disney. And uh, one of the um, dimensions of the pirate's reality that's been told here, just as an example, is that a good pirate uh, never takes another person's property. And of course, in the uh, cultural technique of memes, which is such a powerful tool of storytelling uh, in, in the age of uh, digital connection, somebody put down uh, a picture from, I'm not quoting, but another uh, 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 very uh, successful entertainment um, uh, 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 genre, uh, a movie, uh, uh, pointing out that uh, uh, you are without uh, doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. So uh, that's just an example because Robin told us about pirates and I totally agree uh, uh, that, that, that kids should learn about pirates. But if the reality Disney tells as an entertainment industry without having scholarly uh, uh, backup by museums is the reality of pirates that should not uh, and never took another person's property, uh, we run into uh, uh, difficulties of uh, alternate realities to, to say so, and that we should avoid. And I believe we can easily avoid by collaboration between these two worlds of entertainment and museums. Um, okay. There we go. Thank you very much for your statement already. We already have the first questions coming in through our tools. Um, I would like to ask the first question by Ariane who asks, what exactly do you mean with the audience's engagement? Like how does the storytelling lead to action and which actions would be the goal according to Disney's vision? That's gonna depend on, on the, the actual exhibit so, or the actual experience. So to the, to the point that the, the, the first responder was just making about um, comparing scholarly reports on, on pirates, for example, agree with you, but that was the distinction between the Magic Kingdom and, and in this case, Epcot, where we tell real world stories. So in fantasy, where we are suspending disbelief, like every fantasy, you know, we don't believe that, that there are witches who can, you know, have poison apples and, and princesses that live up in towers. That, that's not real. There's no amount of, of um, meeting with with museum scholars that would make any of that real. So at some point we have to be, we have an op obligation to be very clear on when we're in the range of fantasy and when we're talking about real world things. In terms of audience engagement, um, at, at, at the lowest bar, what I'm referring to is if you draw somebody into the story and if you make that story memorable, then you will remember that experience. So if the first time that you saw a, a moon rock or the first time you saw an artifact from centuries before was at a museum and the way that that was presented and the way that, that you will remember when you saw that. And that is, that is where the, the goal of, I think, museum exhibits and entertainment are similar. You want to have that moment where the person, where the guest that came into the museum so engaged and so was moved by that content that they remember it, that they absorb it, that they, that they move to action. So there was actually, there's a museum, I, I wrote notes here, there's a museum in Ireland called the Cool Planet Experience. It just won this year, 
the themed entertainment association award for museums. And it was a, um, it was an old estate in Ireland that they wanted to, to convert to be more energy efficient. And in so doing, they created a guest experience. I haven't been there and was just listening to the case study the other day. A guest experience that drove guests in, you know, that, that drew guests in by, by asking them some questions at the beginning about what their carbon footprint was. And then through the exhibit and through different um, through different experiences, they saw what the impact of their choices were and how they might have um, they might have the potential to make further impact. So that particular exhibit, which was real content, which was real data, but was portrayed in using all the latest technology from both you know tracking with with IFR wristbands. Um, to engaging and providing content and, and real-time feedback and, and then having programs that you could immediately participate in or sign up for, whether it was, you know, a camp on, on um, environmental issues, et cetera. So it was, it was that proximity of having the emotional engagement and then the opportunity to turn that into action. There's I want to agree question. with Robin on that. Uh, Can I just, just I would like to like, give the audience the, the chance to, to ask their questions. So, sorry to interrupt you this uh, so roughly, but we have to, I would like to include those questions as well, because I think there's one question by Harald, which is really also very much fitting to what you just said. Uh, also, where do you see the limits to the freedom in exploring or observing for those active observers you intend to create? So how do you make these limits transparent to the visitor? I'm not sure I understand. Can you say the question again? I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. So where do you see the limits also in participating and actively participating for the active observer that you int intend to create? So how do you make these limits transparent to the visitor? Well, it, it, in the theme park world, it's very specific because there are um, there are the physical requirements in a space in terms of what you can physically do, whether it's what you can touch, how close you can get. Um, so in, in the sort of real world um, physical engagement that's communicated through the placemaking and the physical design of the exhibit. If, if the question is more theoretical um, in terms of, of setting those expectations, I think that goes into the narrative that I'm not sure if, if there's no limit to what your participation can be, if, if what you're really, you know, if it's something so broad as you're trying to inspire people to be moved by art or moved by history, there really isn't a limit into what that participation or, or how that participation might be manifest in the day-to-day -day life. Do they, do they start seeking out more experiences? Do they read more? It's, it's happening in Black Lives Matter and in some of the, the social um, awakening that's happening is people I think are, are moved by what's happening in a way that, you know, historically it's, it sort of comes in waves, but we're at a moment now where I think there's a larger part of the population who is feeling things at a visceral level and is looking for ways to, to understand that more. And, and I think that the museum world has, has a role in explaining both the historical context that, that gives that dimension, um, as, well as, providing, as, as well as providing historically, at least, boundaries of successful and impactful participation. I'm not I sure think the, 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 the one of the most interesting dimensions uh, of, of Robin's introductory uh, uh, talk, but, uh, but also uh, what you just uh, said uh, in regard to the question, um, to both questions actually, is that aspect of experience uh, and, and something museums can learn from the entertainment world, uh, I would argue, is to make that experience not exclusively bounded to the physical reality. I, I can buy a ticket um, for a visit to a cinema or a music festival or whatsoever, and my experience starts uh, before. I was uh, going to point out uh, uh, in regard to your first uh, answer, uh, uh, Robin, I, I was at a 
um, music and uh, uh, art and science festival in the Principality of Liechtenstein, which might not be a leader in the entertainment industry, but this one was fascinating because they asked us, uh, including our speakers, uh, for our date of birth. And when we arrived, then the, the um, little name tag that you usually get uh, had the amount of CO2 in our hometown uh, on our day uh, of birth, as well as the numbers of cars uh, in our hometown city. It all was designed the same way, but it was very personalized. And, and that's the two things, ex uh, making the experience um, uh, uh, non-correlating necessarily to the physical visit of a building of a museum, um, as well as uh, well, by sharing it on social media and so on and continue the dialogue, as well as personalizing it in a way that has not been possible uh, uh, so far without the digital tools. Entertainment is very good in that. And, and by doing these two things, personalizing and, and making the experience uh, a broader a continuum that is uh, uh, where the physical visit is only one part of before and after, uh, just as you said, I think that are two very valuable learnings from, from entertainment and Disney in particular, I guess, uh, for the world of museums uh, in regards to the questions we heard. Yeah. Unfortunately, we already have to come to an end of this very interesting conversation. It's really a, a short amount of time that we have. Um, I'm sorry we couldn't include all the questions. I'm sure we will get the chance at a later time um, to ask your questions. Thank you very much, Robin, for your time and for answering the questions. Manusha will stay with us for the next deep dive with Tim Reeve, whose sprint you already heard, and which will begin in just about one minute. So thank you again, Robin, and thank you. enjoy the rest of the program, I hope. Thank you.